balances the topic in part two of a three-part series known as the Trio of Intonation. These balance tips will hopefully improve your students' ensemble skills for a confident performance. Welcome to the Music Advice Podcast. My name is Colin Gielitz and I'm a music educator and I'm going to share some tips and tricks with you to hopefully make your teaching experience easier today. Balance rests on the principle that we naturally hear higher sounds better than lower sounds. I tell my students that we play with a pyramid of sound to sound like a column of sound. Lower sounds need to project more to be perceived as equal. Balance has three parts. The first is the student playing in balance with himself. Playing their lower sounds fuller than their higher sounds will produce an even balance, and this habit will lead them to play in balance with other students better in the ensemble. The second part is balance within the ensemble, which is multifaceted. The first overall is overall ensemble balance. We have been told as educators about the pyramid of balance. However, I'm a proponent of the double pyramid of balance. The woodwinds and the brass have a separate balance pyramid for every wind instrument family. This mainly alters the way the trumpet section projects within the balance of the ensemble. They're at the top of the brass balance pyramid rather than the middle of the overall pyramid. The second has to do with chord balance. Chords are balanced according to where their notes appear in the overtone series. In a triad, roots are played fullest, then the fifth, and then least of all the third. If the chord is forte, the root can be played forte, and the fifth is mezzo forte, and the third is mezzo piano. The tensions appear in the, in the order of seventh, ninth, eleventh, and thirteenth, according to chord balance. Most often, composers and arrangers have already taken the time to balance the chords according to this rule. There should be more roots than fifths, more fifths than thirds, etc. So the chord will balance as long as it's played with attention to the printed dynamic. Finally, directing student listening is more effective than adjusting balances from the podium. I usually point to sections that have the melody and the students adjust their volume accordingly so that they can hear this melody while they're playing. In this way, the ensemble balances around the melody and is self-correcting. Hopefully these tips and tricks will help you in your band room and on stage. Thank you for listening to the Music Advice Podcast. My name is Colin Gields. Please like and subscribe.